Okay, this is going to be a quick video to illustrate how to populate the GARP dataset manager for preparing your climate dataset for niche models. So we're going to need to open the dataset manager. This is a separate application from the desktop GARP uh, <coughs> model software itself. Uh, this is runs on its own to build a catalog of raster files that will be available for a GARP experiment. Okay, we have to have ASCII files for these, and I've, I've already pre-prepared these. But the uh, GARP Tools uh, R package also can produce those for you. Okay, and I'm going to navigate to <coughs> a location on my C drive where I'm storing these files. So I have an ASCII folder here. And notice that Desktop GARP can see all of these ASCII files. Now the first thing I have to do is create a mask. Now a mask is a raster version uh, of a steady boundary. So the mask says everything inside of the mask is available for use by the model. Everything outside of the mask is coded as no data or ignored. Now in our case, all of these files have been clipped to the state of Florida from a shapefile that we've agreed to use. Uh, and Desktop GARP can't use that shapefile as a mask like you might use in, <clears throat> in ArcGIS or, or R or QGIS. So what we're going to do is here in this window, we're going to copy and paste this first file and we're going to rename it. Okay, so all we've done is say that the extent of this environmental data set is going to be the extent of one of the original files, but it has to be called mask because desktop GARP is going to be looking for that file uh, as the delimiting boundary. So you're just going to copy paste any one of those. I always take the first one and so you can see here I have all of my original uh, raster files plus a mask. And you'll notice as these populate here that mask is going to come up at the very end with parentheses around it. Okay, So that tells us that it can read the mask and it can read all of these uh, original files. Now these two fields that I'm about to populate are mandatory for desktop GARP. So here I'm going to say FL TALA Florida tells me the geographic extent. TALA TALA tells me the source of data. 1KM tells me the spatial resolution. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste that and identify name the identifier and the title. Okay. The rest of this information map units, coordinate system description, or metadata that you could populate. Down below the environmental layer info, if you click on any given uh, file in the list, in the layer list on the left, then you can change the name here and you can add information and descriptive uh, information about it. All of this is optional and does not need to be changed unless you want to change it as the user. These two are mandatory and I'll show you why. Okay. If we're running desktop GARP, we're going to take whatever uh, grid data set, GARP data set we develop here, and we're going to load it here. If we leave the identifier or the title of the data set info blank, then it will remain blank when we populate uh, our desktop GARP experiment with environmental data. Okay? So keep in mind, whatever name you put here is the name that will appear here in the pull-down once you've populated desktop GARP for the data set. If you leave this blank, this will be blank even though the data will be available. Okay, okay. the next thing I'm going to do is save this. And I want to save this in a place where nothing else is going to be in here. Okay. And I'm going to save this with the same name that I just named 
the data set with. And this GARP data set file, file type, is going to have uh, its own file extension, which desktop GARP is going to be able to see to read this data list. Okay. I'm going to save that. And now we're done with the data set manager. Okay. Now if we come over to the original ASCII folder where I was just working and we open it, and we sort this by file type, there are several things that you're going to notice here. First, there's our mask. Here are all of our original ASCII files. ASCII is the grid format that Desktop GARP uh, requires to convert into these raw files. So notice here, I've got a repeat of all the original ASCII files now as raw files. Desktop GARP Dataset Manager has now rescaled those ASCIIs to 8-bit 0 to 255 value grid cells, uh, grid values for every grid cell, and can now use this in the model. These .prj files are files that were created when I created the ASCIIs. These are just GIS projection files, and those might be useful down the road so we don't delete them. And then we have this Florida Tala 1km.dxl. This is the dataset layer file that we just created uh, in the dataset manager. So this is what we're actually going to be looking for in Desktop GARP. So let's go over to Desktop GARP and do just this piece of populating the model, which is loading the environmental layers. So we're going to go under Datasets, Scan Directory, Notice it's going to go to the last place I was building models from. So in my case, that was some uh, models on my computer uh, for Chobe National Park in Botswana. And I'm going to navigate over to the C drive where I've been working on this project. And there's my DXL, first one that comes up because it's alphabetical. And now I can see it and now I can see that I have all of these variables and now I'm ready to move on and populate the rest of this GARP data set uh, or GARP experiment uh, once we move through the next uh, piece of information which is preparing your uh, Excel file and then populating the model. Okay so that gets us through uh, the first piece of populating uh, the GARP dataset manager. What this means is anytime you create a new set of ASCIIs, you can go in and create a new uh, GARP dataset inside of the data manager. A uh, couple of other things about that. We can also open previous datasets and we could modify these. Okay, The main two ways we would modify these is to add and remove data. Okay, so we might decide we don't need all of these uh, variables or more realistically you're probably going to go out and get additional variables such as uh, elevation and then you would need to add that in here. When you do add that in what you would want to do is first match your ASCII files using uh, prepare your ASCII files using the GARP tools package in R and then come back and build a new directory. Okay. One word of caution. This folder here that I'm calling FL ASCII that already has a data set layer in it, I will now do nothing inside of this folder except possibly modify this uh, data set manager, but I will not add or delete things into this folder and I will absolutely not work out of this folder for anything. This folder now only contains data for use in desktop GARP. If you notice, I have a grid folder and I have an ASCII folder and that's it in either of those folders. Here are all the original Esri grid uh, version, uh, file format versions of all those ASCIIs. So first I prepared the grids, then I prepared the ASCIIs and notice the only thing in these are grids and ASCIIs and now one DXL file, the PRJs, and the raw files. And that's it. Okay, So this folder is used only for storing data that are going to be used inside of desktop GARP. 
and you never put another file inside of here. Okay, good luck.